Hey guys, Joe Pye here at Advanced Innovations. You know, about three years ago, 2016, June-ish, give or take, I posted my first machining video, and I did that video because I was watching YouTube lunchtime, got fired up about a topic that I was pretty passionate about, threading on a lathe, and I went out to the shop, and I shot my first YouTube video ever on the topic of machining. Now, if you go back and you find it, it looks like it was done while I was sitting in the back of a pickup truck. It's jumpy and shaky, and I may reshoot it someday, but it's worth taking a look at. It's about an inverted threading technique that works very well. Well, inspired by that same frustration that made me walk out and do that first video, I feel that I need to address a topic that I continue to see come up on social media and other YouTube channels, and just in general, a misconception back at thread. And that would be thread depth. If anyone ever asks you, hey, how deep should I cut this thread, smack them and tell them, there's the door, get out of my shop. Threads are not driven by the depth of the thread. And, okay, if you're not aware of this, then I'm going to try to be as gentle here as possible. You can take a really sharp tool, you know, I'm going to just say how many different ways this can go bad, right? Thread standards are in place so that you have interchangeability from a machine shop making a part in California to the guy sitting on the back of his pickup truck for six weeks waiting for the uh, postal service to deliver it so he can get his tractor back on the field. And it better fit when it shows up. That's what standards do. That's what pitch diameters control and that's what thread forms control. It's not the depth. It's not the alignment of the planets, and forgive me if I'm getting a little passionate here, but I'm fired up about this one. If you have a really sharp, pointy tool working against the maximum outer diameter of the part that you're threading, and you dial in X depth, okay, you're going to get this. Maximum diameter there is for the part that you're working on razor sharp tool, let's say you want to go 100 deep, all you've got is a scratch to the surface and you're going to end up with a very large crest flat and a very minimal or non-existent root flat. The pitch diameter is going to be massive, it's going to be huge. Now pitch diameter is in place so that external threads will fit internal threads. When you get up to, I think, a class 3 thread, the theoretical overlap between how big an external thread can be and how small an internal thread can be, theoretically, it's a line fit. Theoretically, I believe. Check it out. When you cut a thread, do not, please do not, worry about how deep the thread goes. That is just absolutely not the way to do it. If you're cutting a thread on something that you have 100% control over and will have 100% control over indefinitely, I don't know, a lawnmower shaft or, or something within your shop, your world, forever, then by all means just run that threading tool on that part until they go together. Use the nut, use a commercial nut, I don't care what you use. But if you're making a part to print and there's a spec 2A, 2B, 3A, 3B, there's a reason for that, and it's interchangeability, and it's, I can't stress this enough, that it's got to be the pitch diameter that you follow. Now, every thread has a pitch diameter, internal or external. External threads are considered an A-class thread, and I've said this in other videos, A-class is easy to remember as an external thread because A for air, that thread is exposed to the air. B for bore, simple, A air, B bore, easiest way to remember that. I get a lot of questions of can you check an internal thread with wires, is there any way to check an internal thread with wires, and the answer to that is absolutely not, you cannot do it. You can check an external thread with wires, but you need a hard gauge, a cylindrical gauge, thread gauge to check an internal thread. I have never seen any device to check a board thread short of a hard plug gauge. Here's the twist. Okay, you're going to use a 2A thread. You're going to cut a 2B bore, right? You make a 2A thread gauge. You screw it into your 2B bore. It fits. It works perfectly. When it gets to where it's going, it doesn't go together. 
and you run into the boss and you say, I swear to God, I've used a two-way plug gauge on that thread and I know it worked. Well, guess what? You did it wrong. When you make an external thread to check an internal thread, you need to use the pitch diameter of the internal thread on your external gauge. That's the only way to guarantee that the internal thread you just cut is cut to spec. Don't use the 2A thread pitch diameter to check a bore. It's not going to work. It will work, but interchangeability, not guaranteed. Not happening. Tool flat. The tool flat, the tip of the tool. An ideal thread profile. Ideal thread profile. And this is probably never going to happen in a million years, but this is the ideal thread profile. The ideal thread profile. I'm going to say that about nine more times. The crest flat equals the root flat equals the crest flat. Okay, you've got the picture. I know that's greatly exaggerated, but that is the idea. This guy right here equals this guy right here. Theoretically, the crest and the root flats are identical. The pitch diameter is the theoretical point of construction. If the crest and root flats are identical, it's the distance midway in that profile to the exact same distance midway on the opposite side. That is your pitch diameter. You can check pitch diameters with wires. Best way to do it. I mean, I like a hard gauge, but we're not going to go out and buy hard gauges for every thread we cut, right? So get yourself a cheap set of wires. And if you can't buy them where you're at, well, call me and I'll ship them to you. I, I, I'll do that. I'll mail them to you. I mean, you've got to buy them and pay for postage, but I'll set it up. We'll do it. Got to have them. When you measure with wires, i got 10 videos on measuring with wires, so look them up. I'm not going to kill you with it, but the wire sits in here. And you measure over top of the wires on either side, one side, use one, two, or three wires, it doesn't matter. And if you don't believe that, go watch the video because it's true. Wires are incredibly accurate, but they're also dependent on a good tool and a good approach and a good thread. So everything with a thread, there's nothing that's random about a thread. It's got to be there. Anybody that's ever seen the movie Star Wars... Right, everybody in the world has seen that movie. Well, remember when the Death Star is coming in and they got this blast pattern that, oh my God, in another 15 minutes they're going to be able to see around this planet and blow us apart. Okay. Here comes the Death Star. Here's your, here's your little guy over here going, oh my God, I'm going to get blown up. So, the sooner the Death Star gets around, here comes that profile, here comes that cone. you got to think about that cone when you're running a thread. I know it's pretty random, but if I can get you to think about something, let's think about it. Here's your part. Ultimately, when you cut that thread, you're going to be cutting a V in that thread, right? Well, there's your little Death Star comb coming out of there. Just imagine a big cone sticking out of your part walking by. If your compound doesn't have at least one side, Close to being parallel with that cone. If your compound is sitting in here like this, because you use the wrong 30 degrees, well, this side angle is not even close to this one. That compound has got to be sitting in here like this. Visualize it in your head. Stay within that projected cone. You want the center line of that compound riding somewhere on the center line of that profile. And then kick it. Okay? Start with the face of the part, not the side of the part. A lot of guys get caught that way, and you know who you are because I continue to see it happen. The tool flat that you use, it's so much better to have a sharper tool nose. Okay? And if the flat on the face of the tool is too flat, you may get a false reading with your pitch diameter because the wire doesn't hit the bottom of the canal. So here's your, here's your thread that you're cutting. And your wire sits in here. Your wire is not going to give you the root diameter of the thread. The wire is going to give you the pitch diameter. You have to keep in mind 
that that thread flat in the bottom of the, of the thread profile is going to be, good rule of thumb here guys, one eighth the pitch. One eighth the pitch. So whatever the pitch is, 16 threads per inch, that would be a 62 thou pitch. One eighth times 62 thousandths will give you the tip flat. That's a max. That's an absolute max. Don't go any bigger than that on the nose of the tool because then the thread root diameter starts to get bigger. And when the thread root diameter is bigger, it may interfere with the bore of the part that you're screwing it into. You'll say, oh, the pitch diameter is great. No, the root flat's too big. And uh, now it's hitting inside the bore. Boom. Pitch diameter calculations. Not all that hard. You can find pitch diameters all over the internet. You can find charts all over the place if you have a machinery handbook. Every conceivable dimension you need for running a thread is in that machinery handbook in print. But you need to know what those numbers are. Min and max major diameters for an external thread. That just means how big the cylindrical profile is. How big is it? I mean, what's the max diameter? What's the minimum diameter? That's the major diameter. The pitch diameter is that theoretical cylindrical tangent diameter on a perfect thread profile. Very important. Pitch diameter is the one that you work with when you get the wires. So how does it apply? All right. The pitch diameter chart is going to come with an add value and a constant value. The nominal size of the part, the nominal size of the thread. And sorry for you guys in the UK and all over the world with metrics. I'm going to speak imperial, so forgive me, but the application is the same. If you have a half inch diameter thread, let's go with half 13, half 13, you have an add value and a constant value. The add value is going to be probably smaller than the constant. I don't know if that applies all the time, but the add value is what you tack on to the major diameter of the thread. So add. Plus the major diameter is the max PD. Good rule of thumb. Add plus the major is the max PD. So if the add is 26 thou and the major diameter of a 500 thread or half 13 is 500, you've got to go with the nominal would be 523, 526, whatever I just said. That's the add function on your PD chart. There is a constant value on the PD chart, okay? Constant, C-O-N-S-T is gonna say. So a constant value you add to the high and the low of the PD separately, okay? So the constant plus the high PD equals the max over the wires, and the constant plus the low PD equals the min over the wires. And when you have this chart that comes with these wires, it's going to tell you what diameter to use. Okay? Constant goes with the pitch diameter. Add goes with the major diameter. Add is a reference. It'll get you there. Then we'd say, okay, we want to see at least this on the mic maybe smaller, because the smaller you get, the wider the thread gets, the sloppier it's going to fit. Compound angle I covered, thread form I covered, PD add and constant I covered, the tool flat I covered, go with a sharper nose if you have to, thread depth, take your thread depth charts and put them in your desk drawer for a rainy day when you're fixing your lawnmower. Do not use a thread depth to create a thread on anything you're going to send out. Because the only thing you're going to do is piss somebody off and you're going to get the part back and you're going to make it over again. Okay? No thread depth. Stick with the pitch divers. If you guys have any questions whatsoever on this, this is very important and I know it inside out. Leave it in the comments. If you have developed a system of your own over the years after running so many threads, by all means leave that in the comments for everybody to benefit from as well. Alright, <laughs> well... Thanks for letting me rant. You know, it's almost the anniversary of my first rant, so I figured I'd throw another one out there. As always, thank you very much for watching. 
Thank you to everybody that uh, purchased the new shirts. If you like them, let me know. If you don't like them, let me know that as well. And thank you to all my new subscribers. I will give a walk around of all the new stickers that have shown up. They're coming in from all over the world. And I can't thank you guys enough for uh, wanting your stuff up here. Makes my day. All right, Joe Pie Advanced Innovations, Austin, Texas. I'm out.